Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I'm driving in the in the desert here and uh, I think this must be some kind of preserve because uh, even though there are no trees here, really no water to speak of, uh, there's also no buildings and uh, just pure beautiful pristine desert habitat. Anyway, here I am a day or so after uh, the equinox, the spring equinox for 2016, and I thought I'd give you an update on the City Dome for Los Angeles. Uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a blog about the, um, the City Dome and the big city domes all over the world, explaining that there was kind of a, a giant um, shell or like a bubble, a half bubble of uh, uh, really more negative energy uh, around the, the huge cities at that time after the ascension. It was like um, pressurized inward by, um, by the incoming light and uh, it, the inside the bubble there was more pollution, uh, there was more noise and the people were suffering more and the earth was more polluted uh, and so it was it was like different different from the rest of Gaia at that time and oh in the astral sphere oh my lord at least in the greater Los Angeles city dome there were packed in all kinds of uh, astral negative being, beings the, the demon realm really were all packed into that area because whereas before the ascension they had been free to roam around wherever they wanted after the their earth ascended into the into the higher life light of Alcyon uh, this photonic belt uh, in 2012 at end of 2012 uh, it much of Gaia became uninhabitable for the demon realm but the cities were still okay for them I remember before that before 2012 they knew what was coming up you know and they're a very intelligent race of beings and there were and they were the main telepathic holders of the cities, uh, the, um, the rights holders of the cities, the fiefdoms and so forth, of so the cities that are spoken of elsewhere. And um, there were long, and there were long conversations, there were very few human beings that were like, could hear, overhear what these, these, the demon world was saying at that time. I being a very appalled one human being who could at that time, there were a few more. And um, they just assumed that they owned the airwaves of Earth, the newosphere of Earth. It was like a farm, you know, a farm for creating negative energy to sustain them because they live on negative energy, on hatred and like that. They like that a lot. So, but anyway, um, they were talking and they were, they would talk to me too. They would, they would say, what's the chance for beings like us, right, after the ascension process? And I, you know, I didn't know what to say about that at the time. Now I do. I know that there's always some, like, realm or place for every being, you know. Or, or the proper ending, there's a proper ending. So, uh, but then I didn't. And their decision at that time, pre-2012, their decision was a delaying tactic. They would do what they could to make things much worse in the newosphere of Earth prior to and just after 2012 in hopes of maintaining their city fiefdoms for as long as possible. And that was what all of the roiling commotion that went on in the newosphere uh, in the 2012, 2013, 2014 time frame had to do with, it had to do with their strategies to maintain like airspace or living space on earth. Um, and uh, I would say, personally, I was uh, horrified by their strategies. I mean, you have to admit, there was genius in it. You know, they're more intelligent than human beings. Great genius in it. But uh, great appalling woe for humankind, too. But through that kind of uh, trial by fire, we humans during an ascension process learn to choose. You know, we exercise our free will and we, we, we 
we must choose firmly either for uh, power over realm that the demon demons are so well known for or for the realm of the heart Christ consciousness and so forth those are the two choices that are available to us during this time of change and that was a digression please excuse me so to get back to the city domes uh, in 20 um, 13 I was driving through there was a, a, a there were 150 as, as I may recall demons that were like impinging on my aura through um, the San Fernando Valley as I drove and and when I got to um, a Riverside uh, I stopped for ice cream and then to, sl to sleep for a minute and I saw I had like a, a clear vision of all of the people there with like uh, devils or demons or some kind of negative being palling around with them and kind of lording it over them which, which pretty much freaked me out it was a cause of my eating the ice cream that day so then I got farther up the hill to, to, uh, to Barstow where I was going to spend the night and there right there in Barstow right about the area of, of my motel where I stayed was the very edge of the city dome of greater Los Angeles at that time and I can remember like um, some kind of incoming missiles of light it seemed like coming down uh, uh, white and and red and and hitting uh, the city dome and like kind of like bullets even I mean it was like there was a war it was that strong was the difference in energy between the darkness that was uh, sequestered in the Los Angeles City Dome and the uh, the um, everything else in the universe. <laughs> it was pretty much a freak out experience. I could feel it tingling in the in the cable lines of the um, of my computer and in the phone lines and in the, um, the television lines. Anything electronic was affected by it at that time, and I just decided not to use any of those instruments at that time. Then later during that time, I was signed up to go to the, um, the summer solstice sadhana at uh, the White Tantric in um, uh, Española, New Mexico with the um, 3HO group there out in the mountains, right? And, and I went out there and it was it was incredible what was going on there. It was there was some kind of sky show, like uh, a warfare in the sky, like a um, Mahabharata scene going on, fighting between the demon realm and the angelic realm, high down from the sky and like pinging down into my aura, like not like nothing I could ever describe. And I had to leave. I had to leave. There was just a tremendously hostile situation going on. Uh, only with regard to me and being there apparently uh, so uh, you know that was that experience in, in 2015 in the summer I was once more heading out of Los Angeles and the it seemed to me that I crossed that same demarcation line at the edge of the city dome of Los Angeles um, much closer to the center of Los Angeles I would say at that time that uh, it was before before I got to to uh, what do you call that Redlands? It was I'll look it up, but I think that the city dome had shrunk by half, right? Which was very good news at that time. And there were no like 150 demons hanging around. There were no people that were like being shattered around by the demon realm anywhere. It, it was pretty much a much nicer exper experience, but still just a little wild and woolly, if you know what I mean. There was a lot going on, and it was a big relief to get all the way out past Barstow and out into the into the desert again. I remember that. So I thought I would compare that with what happened this year, just now, as I left the greater Los Angeles at the um, spring equinox 2016, right? And and I got all the way out here to the desert and I was conversing on the astral plane with this person and that. And it suddenly occurred to me that during the equinox 20, uh, spring equinox 2016, that the city dome of Los Angeles had collapsed. Right, collapsed. And so, so what that means is that as far as I know, 
throughout the city of Los Angeles, it's possible now for the photonic light to get in. And for the for the for the Los Angeles, the whole everyone in Los Angeles to level up. The light was already getting in last year, uh, and when I came back in the in the um, January a couple couple of months ago, uh, all the people in my neighborhood had become very clear. They, they, everybody in Los Angeles had become more clear, so the light was getting through even though the dome was in place. Yet there was still quite a bit of demonic energy. And that energy uh, between January and March of, of this year uh, disappeared by leaps and bounds out of, out of Los Angeles. Just by leaps and bounds things went, things disappeared. All of the old neg negative threads of energy seemed to be gone now. The last one, a very great thread of negative energy, disappeared last night. After it's a day or so after the equinox, At, but no doubt there'll be more refinements of like the leveling up of the light in the next weeks and coming weeks, all the way up to to June and maybe longer, maybe through September. Um, so extrapolating from these experiences I've had with Greater Los Angeles, I would I would be inclined to say the likelihood is that throughout Gaia right now, uh, the large cities are in a much better situation than they were before. It is possible, and I'm hoping and praying that the city domes of all the cities, the large cities throughout Earth, have collapsed, and that all of the people, sorry, and all of the, the, actually, the Earth, all of the Earth uh, that's, that's in the areas of the cities ha now have a chance to, to clear and purify, cleanse themselves and, and to level up uh, as quickly as, as is reasonable, as quickly as is um, compatible with the comfort of both Earth and all of the beings that are in those cities. And that, that pretty soon it'll be one Earth, one great Earth, resounding in the harmony of the all. That's my vision. I wish you very good, beautiful days of spring. Take care.